Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Thursday is going to be busy as well. You'll have game six, Pell Suns. You will also uh, have that coinciding with the NFL draft. The uh, uh, ESPN NFL Nation reporters tonight are going to have their annual NFL Nation mock draft, which will be at 7 o'clock Central on ESPN2, which means our buddy Mike Triplett will be partaking. He's good enough to join us now for a couple of minutes. Mike, thanks for the time as always. How are you? Doing great. How you doing? I'm, I'm here in the green room getting ready to make my pick. Okay. I, Not really. We, we, pre, we pre-taped this year. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask. Okay, so you taped it because y'all have done that live in the past, right? I know. Yeah, we haven't gone. Uh, I, I'm sure next year we'll be back to that. We didn't quite arrange the full fly everyone to, to Bristol yet this year, even though things are almost all the way back on. We're actually flying there in May instead this year for, for a summer. But uh Next, this will be the last year, hopefully, that you have to watch the uh, my living room in the background instead of the big podium setup. <laughs> well, I remember that because of the COVID year where you all did it virtually. I guess COVID just made everybody adapt, and uh, we've found ways to keep that uh, moving forward. So, remind. I do look forward yeah. to though. We we have our NFL reporter Dan Graziano, who really has has car- carved out a niche market for himself. He's the best at. Uh, rating the backgrounds of each reporter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so follow his commentary along with the show. Can you make trades? No. Uh, you know what's funny, though? The very first year we ever did this, I traded up for Brandon Cooks, just like the Saints did. I've never been more proud of myself. That's incredible. Wait, so they allowed you to trade then, but not now? They did that year. That year they did. Well, we weren't doing it. We, we didn't have the big TV show then. It was just online, so it was easier. Got it. It didn't. We didn't throw too many wrenches when we made trades back then. Well, you made a receiver pick then, and you were correct. Uh, are you going to yeah. make a receiver pick at it's, 16? Boy, it feels exactly the same. Now, so that year feels so much similar to this year. I, this year, I think they'd probably need even a little more than they needed that year. Um, you know, this year, I think they need a little more in the draft in terms of long-term needs. I could name six or seven positions where positions where they're a year or two away from really needing somebody. I mean, eventually we're going to have to worry about replacing Cam Jordan and Demario Davis, uh, among others. Um, but what is similar to me is I can I can write in pencil. I can write twenty one starters down right now mm-hmm. that you feel pretty good about going into the season with, and and it's that number two wide receiver spot that is the one that has a space right now. If it doesn't happen in the first maybe second round of the draft, then Jarvis Landry wins and they pay him whatever he wants, I think. <laughs> Where, so, do you be, they're going to take a receiver. Do you believe that it happens in round one? Well, I think they would like to take a receiver as well. Uh, but it's funny, a, a little sneak preview tonight, the choice becomes difficult tonight um, for me. And I've actually seen a lot of mock drafts in recent days where after months of seeing four rece- the top four receivers where one or two of them always fell um, late into the teams, we're seeing a lot of mock drafts where those top four receivers are all going in like the top 12 now. So if that happens, um, the Saints are going to have to either love a guy that, that we've seen projected more in the 20s, or they're going to have to trade up, or they're going to have to wait till round two. So, uh, you know, I thought for a long time that this draft board was going to set up perfectly for them, but I do wonder if there's an early run on receivers if they have to zig or zag, as it would be. Do you get a sense of who those uh, those early receivers are that they have an eye on or who they really covet? I don't know for sure who they covet, um, because the beauty of their receiver need is they could use just about anything. You know, it's not like there's only one type of receiver that would fit the Saints right now. They could use a guy who could stretch down the field. They could use a guy who could line up in the slot. Um, they could use a guy who could be an eventual number one game breaker to eventually replace uh, Michael Thomas. And I think there's a little of all of those in there. I mean, I think everybody agrees Jamison Williams could be the best of the entire bunch long term. And I don't think that would scare the Saints off from drafting him, even though they are in win now mode, uh, and he is expected to maybe miss time at the beginning of the year. Uh, look, he could be he, he could be helping them come playoff time this year, and he could be helping them for years to come. So I think he's 
absolutely in the mix, but I think his star has sort of been rising as more people have gotten draft information, and, and I don't think he will maybe slip into their grasp anymore. And then obviously Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave from Ohio State would both be great fits. Drake London from USC would be a great fit. And then after that, it becomes a little more beauty in the eye of the eye of the beholder. Um, do they like Traylon Burst? Do they like Jahan Dotson? Do they like, um, you know, a couple guys, Pickens or Watson, uh, who probably won't fall to them at 49 in the second round. So it'll be interesting. Uh, uh, it, it'd be nice if this was an auction draft. <laughs> yeah, and they could be like, "We'll pay what we have to," but you know, a lot of times you need the board to line up for you. Walk me through a scenario, Mike, where Jarvis Landry ends up a New Orleans Saint. Uh, frankly, if they don't if they don't draft a guy Thursday night, I think I think Jarvis Landry becomes a must. I suppose if they get a guy in the second round, and maybe if they had a top twenty grade on him, and they project him as as being a guy who's ready to step in and start right away. Um then maybe you don't need Jarvis Landry and, and, you know, maybe, maybe the bidding goes up on Jarvis Landry. If a couple teams miss out on a receiver and he gets the payday he's been hoping for and doesn't have to settle for a little less, which obviously the saints are, are bargain hunting in free agency. Otherwise I think Landry and Tyron Matthew might already be here. If, mm. uh, if, if they were spending a little more like they have in years past, but uh, this, this is, uh, I agree that receivers should be the top need in the draft. But I also know that they're not going to, you know, how the draft grades line up. They're not going to take a guy who has like an 85 if if there's a defensive tackle with a 90 next to his name. You know, if they miss out on receiver in in rounds one and two, then it's it's an imperative that they go out and find somebody who's ready to start. Um, and Landry makes a lot of sense. There's still a couple other guys. I mean, shoot, Julio Jones is still out there. There's a couple other guys like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they come with injury question marks and stuff like that, but they have to add someone to that position that is not on the team right now. The Saints always trade up. They just always do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always have to be in round one, but they always trade up at some point in the draft. Well, they technically they've already done it. That's you true. Know, I mean, they've, okay. they've already traded up a year, so they've already traded up. Okay. But that doesn't mean they won't do it again. <laughs> what's your okay? So what's your feeling there? Because I mean, you there's mock drafts galore, and everybody's got their opinion about the Saints packaging those two picks, 16 and 19, or one of those and maybe their two or three to move up in uh, in round one? I don't think they made that move specifically because they definitely plan on trading up. Like, like it was always the plan, no doubt about it, they're trading up, and that's why they made that move, and they got the other one in place. So I, I don't think that's true. Now, I think there's going to be some guys that they have rated in their top five. This draft is so unpredictable that I think a lot of teams might end up trading up because, you know, if you look at three different educated mock drafts from people who talk to people in the industry, look at LSU. Perfect example. Um, <laughs> Stingley. Mm. Uh, he's, somebody had him three today. Yeah. Uh, some people have had him 22, you know. Uh, Charles Cross, the offensive tackle, I keep seeing him five, and sometimes I see him fall to the Saints at 16. Uh, you know, any one of the receivers we just talked about, obviously Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett, they could go six, they could go 20. Um, so if the Saints have a guy that's like in their top six and he's still there at 12, they'll go get him. They always will. Uh, but I don't, you know, if the, if the board is falling well and everybody's in a similar cloud for them, They'll happily take two guys. Um, outside of receiver, offensive tackle has got to be the other big spot. Is it your sense, Mike, that they address those two spots in the first round, or that's what they would like to do? Uh, quite possibly. And, and and actually, if they do trade up, I think there's a good chance they're trading up for an offensive tackle because there is a very good chance that they're they're bored. I mean, just the way you see everybody's bored right now. There's a good chance they have three offensive tackles in their top five mm-hmm. this year, uh, just because of the, the the that's that's probably the strongest position in the top ten right now of any position in this draft. So th- I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, look, let's trade up. The, the third best offensive tackle is going to fall to eight or nine, and we could we can just give up a second round pick and go get them. Let's go get them. I, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but. Uh, Aside from that, I don't necessarily think they are going to be left tackle or bust uh, because they do have James Hurst as a placeholder. And I'm not saying they can't upgrade over James Hurst, but James Hurst will give them at least the freedom to not have to force it 
if, if the price doesn't work out for them. All right. He's on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Of course, coming up at 7 o'clock Central tonight, the NFL Nation Draft on ESPN2. You'll see who Mike uh, has the Saints taking at 16 and 19. So you do make both picks. I do tonight. Make okay. both picks. Yeah. Okay. Is um, Do you have a... a a feeling of what you would like them to do or what you would do with their uh, with the second round pick with three top 50 picks what, what they would do with that third pick that second rounder no I mean I would say I would say out of left tackle out of wide receiver out of safety or possibly just defensive back in general defensive line um, you know a future guy who's going to be a starter at end or tackle and then maybe you bring running back and tight end into the mix um, those are those are other positions to need. I, I don't know that the grades will line up for them to take one of those guys in, in the top fifty. But but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the generic best player available because I mean that really is how they operate. If yeah. if they give a guy I mean, I was you know, I mean that a lot of draft boards go one through a hundred, you know. I mean if you have a guy and you say he's an eighty eight, you don't take an eighty two because you wrote down a, a position and you're you're not gonna stray from that. <laughs> it it actually it makes a lot of sense, even though we all we clutch our our mock drafts and our ideologies of what we think teams <laughs> should do. But uh, generally, now if they go if they do if they do go guard, defensive tackle in round one tonight, I'm leaving the facility <laughs> immediately because I don't want to be in there when it gets burned to the ground. <laughs> uh, I mean, I at some point, Mike, it's yes, it's best player available. But there also has to be need. But but you know, Mike, you and I talked, and I don't know if you remember this, but you and I talked in 2017, and I was I was flabbergasted that they used the 32nd pick that year for Ryan Ramchick because they. Well, had- look, I'm glad you brought up. I'm glad you brought up 2017 because we have a lot of detailed information about 2017 that has come out because it's been written about so often. It's one of the greatest draft classes of all time. Mm-hmm. And what were they going to do at 11? They had their number three and four players on the board, falling, falling, falling. That's why they didn't trade up. One was Marshawn Lattimore, a corner. One was Patrick Mahomes, a quarterback. As soon as one guy went off the board, they were going to trade up for the other one. They did not have a position in mind. They had their number three graded player, Marshawn Lattimore, and their number four graded player, Patrick Mahomes. They loved both of them. Then they get to 32 in that round. They're about to take Ryan Ramchak. Sean Payton gets Reuben Foster on the phone. It's a right tackle, and it's a linebacker. It, it it is about the player. It is you know it is not the position. It, it it really almost never is. Now sometimes you get both, and that's awesome, you know. And and that's why sometimes they're so easy to predict. And sometimes when they want to hit both, they trade up. Last year they desperately wanted a corner, and they were willing to trade up seventeen spots to get Patrick Sertan or J.C. Horn. Sometimes they do that. But they don't just say, well, darn it. All the corners we like are gone, so let's take, I don't know, this corner we thought should go in round two. They, that's what they don't do. Yeah. Well, they've had a tremendous amount of success, uh, certainly in the last half decade. Yeah, the results bear it out. So we're just a couple of days away to find out what the next iteration of this draft will be. But more fun is watching Mike Triplett on the NFL Nation mock draft. You got that right. Tonight you at 7 right. o'clock on ESPN2. I'll be locked in. At least, Mike, and until the no, you'll be done by the time the Pell starts. That's a great bridge from seven to eight thirty. Yeah, my my picks should both be done by eight, right? Yeah, I, I'll be yeah the first two thirds of the draft. I'll be done, and the game starts at nine. So the the whole NFL Nation mock oh, draft will be done. Yeah. The game's at nine. We'll be done, man. You'll be kicking up uh, at home, watching yourself on TV, and then you know, then watching the Pell's win, right? Yeah, for sure. I'll keep rewinding. I'll probably get get to the Pels game at the second half after I rewind and watch myself a few times. Well, there's nothing wrong with being at least tightly egotistical and egocentric. Or narcissistic, maybe. <laughs> Would that be the right word? Either way. Mike, thanks as always, man. We appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.